Does anybody remember back in the olden days when we didn't do Zoom meetings and things like that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, good afternoon. This COVID day of celebration of the sixth Sunday of Easter. You don't even need to comment. I realize that the uh, candles are not lit and I'll do that during the opening song. But first, we'd like to discuss today's second reading in which St. Peter encourages us to have reverence for Christ and admonishes us to treat with respect even those who despise the gospel that we preach. As Christians, we are reminded of the animating power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. This means that once the Spirit of God comes upon us, we become active for Christ because what gives life is the Spirit of God. We welcome all to this Eucharistic celebration and we invite you to participate actively wherever and however you are able. We have even in the longest night, for the light will overcome. We will not fear, for we know the sun will rise. Hallelujah is our song. What peace we have even in this wounded world, where the battle rages on. Will not fear, for we know who heals our souls. Alleluia is our song. Alleluia, alleluia, he is risen over all. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia is our song. Sting of death, no power over sin or grave. Alleluia is our song. Alleluia, alleluia, he is risen over all. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia is our song. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with Good afternoon all. Good afternoon, we celebrate today the Holy Eucharist of the sixth Sunday of Easter. Today's gospel, Jesus tells us, Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. For the many times we have failed to keep God's commandments, may we ask for pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way of love, humility, and service. Christ Jesus, you redeem the sinner and pardon the transgressor. Christ Eleison. Christ Eleison. Lord 
Jesus, you show us the way of non-violence and grace. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory, glory to God in the highest, glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the Glory to God in the highest, glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. to God in the highest glory, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relieve in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. Let all the earth cry out 
to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Oh, sing to the glory of his name. Oh, render him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Before you all the earth shall bow down, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Come and see the works of God, awesome his deeds among the children of men. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. through the river on foot let our joy then be in him he rules forever by his might let, let all, all the earth cry out to god with joy let all the earth cry out to god with joy come and hear all who fear god i will tell what he did for my soul be God, who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold from me his merciful love. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. 
But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise my friends in Christ, we are gradually approaching the solemnity of Pentecost. The church invites us to celebrate the spirit of truth and love who strengthens us in the proclamation of the good news of salvation. In our first reading, we heard about the efforts the disciples of Christ were making to be a testimony to the risen Lord and Savior. Through their efforts, so many Samaritans received the sacrament of baptism and confirmation. However, we might ask, since Philip baptized these new converts, why did he not confirm them? Why was it necessary for Peter and John to travel that long distance to lay hands on the new converts already baptized by Philip? I believe that an understanding of our Catholic catechism is very important here. What Philip did by inviting St. Peter, the chief shepherd of the apostles, was absolutely in line with the church's teaching on confirmation. The ordinary minister of sacraments of confirmation is the bishop. If the need arises, he may grant the faculty to priests although it is fitting that he confirms it himself, mindful that the celebration of confirmation has been, for the time being, separated from baptism. For this reason, bishops are the successors of the apostles. The Samaritans needed the Holy Spirit as much as we do today, because it is the Holy Spirit that strengthens and makes us the true soldiers of Christ. The Spirit helps us to bear witness to the truth without fear. It is the same Spirit that resurrected Christ that gives life to our mortal body. As the principal agent of evangelization, the Holy Spirit confirms the truth we preach. In our gospel narrative, Jesus reminds us that if we love him, we must keep his commandments. Hence, as Christians, we should understand that we follow and observe the commandments of God out of love. We keep God's commandments because we are convinced that they will lead us into eternal and everlasting life. Of course, all the commandments are encapsulated on love of God and neighbor. When Jesus asks us to keep his commandments, he's teaching us that love is not just a mere word, but an action. We must make love our way of life. We must make love concrete and possible. We might ask, how do we make love concrete and possible? Eric Fromm, a psychologist in his book entitled The Act of Loving, 
suggested few ways on how to make love concrete and possible, such as love must have discipline. Discipline means doing something hard because it is right. We are usually not very disciplined people. Why? It is because we tend to avoid the difficult, to take the easy way out. We often avoid doing what is right because it involves sacrifice. But there can be no real love without sacrifice. For example, the love of a good mother to her child is a classic example. There was a story about a mother whose name was Agnes. She has a son named Joe. It happened that Joe underwent a liver transplant operation because he had a congenital liver disease. Agnes risked her life by willingly donated a part of her liver to her son for him to live. When asked why she did this, she said, if God would allow, even if I will have another child like Joe, I will repeatedly donate any part of my body in order that my child will live. Such a height of sacrifice. Agnes is not only a true mother, but also a great mother worthy of our praise. In addition, love is patient. Love is not something that comes suddenly. We must work at it and let it grow. We must be patient with ourselves and also with others. A patient person reacts to things not by shouting or angry, but by prudence. Also, love must have humility. The greatest obstacle to love is pride. It is very difficult for some of us to say, I'm sorry. However, may we remember that humility is the foundation of real and authentic love. Finally, love must have faith. Faith means that we believe, even if we do not have any evidence whatsoever of our belief. The deadliest enemy of love is lack of trust and faith. My sisters and brothers, life is all about loving God, oneself and neighbor. But it takes discipline, courage, patience, reasonable, humility, trust, faith, and courage to make it concrete and possible. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who oh, the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. 
May we bring our prayers before the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit, our advocates. For the church, that we may grow in our awareness that Christ is in us and see the hand of God in the people, the events in our lives, and in the created world around us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May our elected officials always strive to keep the Lord's commandments and work for the protection of human life from conception until natural death, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are graduating from high school and college, that God will guide them as they enter adulthood, help their faith to mature, and inspire them to use their gifts for the good of others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are struggling economically, that God will calm their fears, guide them to resources that will sustain them, and help them to be open to others who wish to support them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Divine Savior and all who visit here, that we may remain confident in God's love toward us despite hardship, confusion, pandemic, conflicts, or ill-spoken words against us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been orphaned, that God will protect them from harm, help them to find people whom they can trust, and touch the hearts of many to reach out to them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all researchers, that God will inspire and guide all who are working to defeat disease or promote harmony between humans and the created world. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Peter Ostroganek Sr. and Jim Donahue are enjoying the peace of eternal life. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and the deceased, especially those listed in our parish bulletin, for the intentions listed in our Divine Savior Book of Prayers, and all the intentions from our new online prayer tree, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. I also remember Father Patrick Nicholas, a Salvatorian brother and friend whose mother passed today. Pray that the good Lord may grant the mother a peaceful repose and also to comfort and uh, consolation on Patrick and the family. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our hope and our stronghold, in your love you have given us an advocate, the Holy Spirit, who remains with us always. Hear our prayers that in your spirit we might keep your commandments and devote ourselves to your praise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. When the sky is falling down 
Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamp of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as their acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners the way by which your peace is offered to us, when we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins. You brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ brought to us, we entreat you, to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command will fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hand, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection unto your God again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love. We offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may we, may he, may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and uh, Jaime our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Had the Savior's command. And formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your love, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer for spiritual communion. Jesus, let me remember that even though I can receive your body and blood in a physical form today, I know you are within me, loving me, giving me strength, and that your own heart is beating within me, giving me life. My heart is united in your love. May I dwell with that love today. May I rest with you in my soul. May I also know I'm connected with all my brothers and sisters from Divine Savior and throughout the world by the love that unites us as one. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increasing us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Just to remind us that Divine Savior Book of Prayer has a new online companion version. So feel free to check this, this page daily in our parish websites and also pray for all the intentions listed on the online prayer tree. And we are still seeking parishioners who would like to join this new home-based ministry. So if you are interested, email caroline at divinesavior.com for more information on becoming a member. Thank you. Ooh, and don't forget, you still have 29 hours to submit your act for the talent show. And we need some acts because just a blank screen is pretty boring. So please, please submit them um, to Divine Savior Orange Veil at gmail.com or to myself. This is Elaine, the disembodied voice, or Jen. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. People of God, set your fear fall away. Your chains have been broken, abandon your shame. Lift your hearts, lift your hearts, he is Hallelujah.